Today, I thought we would take a look at another one of the hook concepts that was shared by Matt Jenkins at the 2018 Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anyone interested in the traditional art and craft of blacksmithing. Matt generously gave permission for me to share some of his hook ideas and his are a bit more refined because he's had a bit more experience making these styles of hooks. But today I thought we would look at the basket weave hook that he demonstrated. So let's put on our safety glasses and head on over to the forge. For this hook, I'm going to start with a piece of quarter inch by one and a half inch flat bar. And I'm going to draw the hook out first. I'm gonna take, oh, probably about three inches of this and draw it out till it's about half inch by quarter inch. And then we will cut it off with a square inch and a half section at the top to put the basket weave pattern in. To do this, I'm going to draw this all out from one side. So I'm using mostly half faced blows here. This may take a few heats. Try and keep everything straight. This is something that can be done over the horn very efficiently. You can use both the peen and the horn if you need to. I promise in a few minutes this offset draw will make sense on a hook where I want this centered in the long run. It's going to be quite the substantial hook on it. I think you could get by with less than the three inches or so that I left here. Kind of smoothing out the hammer marks at a lower heat here. So that's pretty close to what I want. It is going to end up a little bit thicker, I think. And that won't hurt a thing. 
makes for a stronger hook in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, and I want to cut it off and, and make it as square as I can. And I'm just going to do this by eye. If you're worried about your eye being calibrated properly, feel free to measure it out. But the best way to train your eye is to, to use it. It is amazing how accurate you can be after you've work by using your eye as your tape measure. I wouldn't do it on anything that's critical though. I'm trying to cut from all four sides so I don't have a real sharp burr, but I'm going to end up doing this, or uh, I'm going to end up cleaning this up in a file anyways. I already selected a pair of tongs that fits that. I can break it off. That's what we want. So I think we need to go to the vise and clean that up with a rasp. This one won't take very long. You can certainly uh, work with a cut-off piece that you cut at a saw first, but I like having the extra handle to start with. Okay. That's all we need there. I'm going to use several different tools here to create the basket weave. The first thing that really makes the difference is a square punch. And this one's a little bit over a quarter inch square on the end. And that'll just create the, the whole part. And you could punch all the way through, but I'm not going to because Matt didn't on his. Then we will need a chisel of some form. I may end up using this smaller chisel, but one way or the other we'll use a chisel to define the lines in the basket weave. And then I'll use one or two butcher tools either just the first pass butcher, which is a little steeper, or the first pass, and then follow up with a second pass butcher, depending on the effect I decide looks the best. And I'll hold it down with a hold fast. Before I get too serious about that, though, I want to draw this little corner that got rounded up here back out. It's a little thicker, so I can afford to do some of that. Because I really do want this to look square. Anybody see anything I forgot to do so far? Like maybe making this into a diamond? I'm just going to push this over. Going to take a little bit to do that because it doesn't really want to go over. You can see where that's starting to be a little bit more diamond shaped. And we do want this point straight in line with the underside or the, the hook, but we also need to make everything blend here. So there's going to be a little bit of fiddling. A little bit of back and forth. Just one reason I left this shank so heavy right from the start. Getting much closer. When Matt demonstrated this hook at the conference, he actually did it with a uh, straight side so that 
instead of a diamond at the top, it was just a rectangle. But he had one in his collection that was diamond shaped, which is why I thought I would go with that. I can see why he demonstrated the straight side version first though. Okay, now this has been upset by all that edge pounding and it's considerably less than my inch and a half. Yeah, not as much less as I thought it was. About an inch and three eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that a little bit more and bring that back out to the full inch and a half. So I want to try and pull this out symmetrically if I can. Just cleaning up that top part of the hook so I don't have to worry about the basket weave getting messed up. Okay. We really are ready to do the basket weave now. The hold fast really makes life easier here. I just want to put some deep square imprints. Start off kind of shallow though, just in case you're off. I'm a little off, but not badly. And this may take a few heats. Now, I had hoped to get three of these. I needed a smaller punch. So this is going to be a very simple basket weave with only four instead of nine. And I say three, three across, but I'd be connecting and that won't look right. So that just lets me know where I want these. And that's not a bad little pattern right there. This will be a very simple basket weave with only four imprints and one cross in the middle, but it will get the idea across and you can expand on the idea to fit the size bar you might have. Had we done this in two inch square bar or two inch square pad here, I think it would have allowed us to get three across. Three by three would be nine total imprints. That's really all you need to do with this. I think you could punch all the way through and it might be a really interesting effect, but I'm not going to do that today because I've never made one of these before, so I'm going to stick with the way Matt was doing it. The next thing we'll do is come through here with a chisel. I think, yeah, this one will work fine. And we need to think about what does basket weave really look like? You don't want to cut all four of these or it's not a basket weave anymore. So you need to put a cut here and here and make it look like this. This bar goes all the way across and the other one ducks under. And then if we do that, that means on this outer edge, it would be this one that ducks under the outer edge. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I hope it'll make sense when we're done. So 
So I want to just cut in there to create a line. Don't cut all the way through, but you don't want to cut very deep at all at this point. We're going to make it deeper. And then I'm going to come to these. So that it looks like it ducks under this other side. And I think we can do this. This might be a mistake. Don't, don't quote me on this one. Leaving a border would probably be nice, so this is probably not the, the right idea here to, to cut these out, but we're going to see what it looks like. Now this is where you go through and use a first pass butcher to create a bevel on the side that ducks is going under and it gives that illusion that it's going under. If you've ever done any leather work, this is very similar to doing leather work, although they don't call it a butcher in leather work. And this uh, leaves quite an impression even as the material cools down. Just don't let it get so cold that you crack it. And that's really all that the first pass butcher does. I've got two more lines there, but I'll get it hot for those. But you should be able to see the effect starting to happen there. The reason there is a first pass and a second pass butcher is because of the angle here. If you start with this one, it sometimes tends to want to jump out of your chisel cut and it leaves a bunch of marks. So this one indexes better, starts the bevel, and then this one refines it some. So we'll hit these last two lines with the first pass butcher. And then we'll go to the second pass. Now frequently this is actually done cold and lighter work and the material is annealed between heats. So you can see where this is pushing that down more dramatically or more gently perhaps I should say. It looks more like it's tucked under than just a chisel line. That is essentially everything that needs to happen to the, that little bit of basket twist. I'm really sorry I didn't make this bigger and do more. If I had time, I'd start over, but I don't have time today to do that, and I thought you'd like to see this, so I'm going to share it the way it is. Just a last little cleanup of the stem right here. And I want to go ahead and punch a hole in that. Using a very small punch. This isn't actually a blacksmith's punch. It's a little knockout punch or pin tight punch. Not the best thing in the world. They tend to deform really easy, but it's the only thing I had that was this small. And once you use them for this, they're useless for anything else. But every now and then, it's nice to have a little tiny punch. So 
there's a nice little hole for a screw. I'd like that countersunk, which I could easily do in the drill press, but a uh, center punch does a pretty nice job of countersinking that for a wood screw. We don't have to worry about a drill press that way. Now that's all I'm going to do to this end. Well, I suppose I'll wire brush it. We're here, we might as well wire brush it. Now I want to turn it around and I want to complete the the hook end. It's a little thinner up here, so I'm going to draw that out a little more. I may end up cutting it off because this is awfully long. And then we'll forge the hook. We've seen drawing out at the anvil today, so I'm going to draw this out real quick under the little giant. I think this is way too long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off before I finish drawing it out and cleaning it up. No reason to draw up material you don't actually have any desire for there. I'm going to draw this down to a gentle Taper because it's generally the way I do hooks. And I'm not going to round it up though. And I'm going to knock the corners down so it's a nice smooth edge and not sharp. Next, I'm going to do a little curly cue in here. Something about like that. I'm just going to go ahead and bend this in a jig. That's because this video is running along. And You can also use the jig to open that back up just a little bit. That is pretty much a completed hook. It's got a little bit of a flat spot right there I want to try and get out. Since this is a little lighter and more delicate, I'm going to use a smaller hammer. This is just some finesse here to get the flat spot out. And a little cone, like we discussed the other day, being a handy thing to have. And here it is being handy. Just remember the cone will encourage this thing to be not parallel, so you got to make sure you straighten it back out again when you're all done. That's better. Now if you want to see the 100% finished hook, stick around just a few more minutes to the end of the video, and I'll show a shot of the finished hook. Well, there's my first go at making a basket weave hook. There are a few things I think I would do differently. For instance, I think I would probably not cut clear out to these 
outer edges. I think that really distracts. I think a solid border would have looked better. And I would make this bigger so that I can get at least three punches across and have nine imprints, and that'd give me more little weaves to go in there. Or I would use a much smaller square punch and make the, the scale smaller. So there's always a learning curve. Uh, you guys have said that you want to watch me just do things and not just watch me succeed. So sometimes we're going to do projects that I've never tried before, and we're going to just watch the first rough go at it. If we do this again, it will look completely different and should look better. And we probably will do this again. So I think this is a worthwhile project. I really like this style of hook. I want to thank Matt Jenkins for giving me permission to share some of his hook ideas. His look way better than this, by the way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you can. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. But then get out to the shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and here's a good close-up look at the finished hook. See you later.